Today I'll be sharing with you all of the accessories and tools that we bought to go along with our ePro camper. I have a ton of stuff to share. Here's a quick preview. We made a lot of purchases for our camper. A lot of the stuff we bought was necessary to be able to even use the camper. And other things we bought uh, were more just to make things convenient. As much as possible, I'll link to the items that we bought in the description. Uh, but note that I didn't necessarily buy all these products from Amazon and I'm not sponsored by or promoting any individual brands or products. Um, for each of these items, I did do some research before purchasing and I can confirm that everything I show uh, to you today uh, does work with this camper. Our camper is a 2020 Flagstaff E-Pro E20 BHS. I assume all of these products will work for the other E-Pro models as well as the Geo Pro line. If you're interested in more details about our camper, we have a full walkthrough video already on YouTube. I've broken down the video into different sections like electrical, water, septic, etc. Uh, so let's jump in right away with electrical. Absolutely, the first thing you need to get um, is a surge protector. Uh, we actually bought this from the dealer directly, so we didn't even leave uh, the dealer without this. Um, this will protect um, surges from coming in to your camper and ruining your electronics. Um, it also has other things it checks. For instance, if there's an open neutral, open ground, reverse polarity, or if there's no power. So when you plug this in, you want double greens at the top and you want a green at the bottom to know that you're getting surge protection. We actually had one campground we went to that it showed reverse polarity, so I was really happy I had that um, and they were able to fix that. The other item you most likely will need is an adapter to go from 15 amp to 30 amp. Um, it's just this little thing. Uh, we need this at home since we don't have a 30 amp service at home, uh, so we wouldn't be able to run our camper without this. Um, if you have a 30 amp at home, you may not need this, um, but we also visit um, our parents' houses and they don't have 30 amp either, so this was definitely, definitely a need for us. Uh, note that when you are running on just 15 amps, you can't run the air conditioner, so everything else you can run um, except the air conditioner, so keep that in mind. To go along with that, you'll need a heavy duty extension cord. Uh, don't just grab uh, any random extension cord off the shelf. Uh, make sure it's a heavy duty one. Um, it should support at least 15 amps. You don't want to get anything smaller than that. Another adapter that we purchased is a 50 amp to 30 amp adapter. Uh, 50 amp is typically used for full size motorhomes. Um, but we knew we needed this because at the farm uh, we only have a 50 amp um, source. Um, it's really obvious because the connections are different. Um, so if you do think that'll ever be the case, uh, this is a good thing to pick up. If you don't have one of these, uh, just make sure whenever you book campgrounds you always get 30 amp service. The last additional piece for electrical that we purchased is an extension cord for our 30 amp service. So. The travel trailer comes with a 30 amp cord, but it's not very long. Um, and if you want to still be able to use 30 amp service, it's really nice to have one of these just in case. Um, we did have one case where uh, we didn't quite reach the 30 amp box and instead of having to move the camper, uh, we were able just to plug in this extra extension cord and still run everything in the camper. So it provides more flexibility in terms of where you can put your camper when you're camping. All right, that covers all the electrical stuff. Um, I'm going to go around and hook our camper back up because I disconnected this morning. We're just running on battery power right now and I can show you how we use uh, both of these adapters. So let's get our camper hooked back up. Um, again, we're at the farm so I need to use the 50 amp to 30 amp adapter. And again, the, the plug's different so it's really obvious um, if you have a 50 amp or not. I plug that in first, and then I always want to do my surge protector before plugging into the camper. So that plugs in next. And then this is what we're looking for here. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but 
I got two greens, which means power on, um, and there's none of these problems, and a green at the bottom, which means I have surge protection. Uh, then I simply just take our camper uh, plug and plug that in. And as long as you got power here, you know you're good to go. Moving on to water for your camper, you're definitely going to need a high quality drinking water hose. Uh, don't grab a standard garden hose. You actually want a higher quality one that's rated for drinking water. This is a 35 foot hose. It's lead free and BPA free. We have two of these uh, just so that we're never short. You don't want to be short on hoses. Um, and we also have a third one that we got uh, with our camper uh, from the dealer. In addition to that, you're definitely going to need a water regulator. Uh, this ensures that the pressure of the water going in your camper doesn't get too high and hurt uh, the internal piping of your camper. It can only take so much pressure and this will regulate that uh, to keep it safe. Those are the only two things I would say are absolute necessities. A couple other things we bought for our camper include an external water filter. There is a built-in water filter in the camper, uh, but I couldn't find a lot of details um, on that. So we felt more comfortable by double filtering, um, especially being hooked up here at the farm. Uh, so we'll do this filter on the outside of the camper and then it'll get filtered again on the inside, which doesn't hurt anything. Um, it should reduce uh, odor of the water uh, and improve uh, water taste. The last thing we bought is just a small uh, water regulator that you can put on the end of the hose. And this is something that we use when we're filling up our fresh water tank. Uh, so instead of just having the hose there and trying to control it, uh, this is just a little simple valve that um, is easy to stick into the hole. And as you feel it getting closer, you can back off the pressure and then turn it off completely without having to run back and actually turn the spigot off. Um, that pretty much uh, is it for the water stuff needed for this camper. Now we'll hook the water back up to the camper. First thing I put on is the water regulator to control the pressure. That just screws on. Next I put on the water filter. And then lastly the hose. So the other end of this hose will go to your camper. And then you just need to turn the water on. Should see the gauge go up to show you that it is controlling the pressure. So it'll keep it in the green range for you and you don't have to worry about uh, high pressure uh, hurting your uh, camper water system. For your sewer system, you'll definitely need to get a septic hose. Um, we actually got one for free from the dealer. That's this one. Um, and it worked fine, uh, but it didn't take us long uh, to decide that we really needed to upgrade from this. Uh, what we went with is a 15 foot RhinoFlex um, sewer hose. Um, this one's really nice because you can make it pretty compact and it just barely fits inside the storage compartment on the EPRO underneath for the sewer hose. Uh, so we really like that. Um, again, it extends up to 15 feet. You can kind of size it whatever way you want. Um, I like that the it has a clear end on so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, you'll know once you completely got your tank flush because the water will start coming out green. Um, the other nice thing with this is it comes with the adapter with different um, dump station pipe sizes. So this just screws on like that. And then this fits snugly to whatever size uh, you're dumping into. And all the places we've ever dumped, this work, this has worked really well and held really tight. So we really like this as an upgrade. The other upgrade you might want to consider is uh, septic hose support. So we bought this one. Um, it's called the Sidewinder. Um, it just basically stretches out to whatever length you need. And you can turn it in any direction. So if you have your hose curved, you can do this. Uh, the nice thing about this is it keeps your sewer hose off the ground, uh, so it keeps it clean. Um, it also helps regulate the flow, so you don't have to worry about uh, stuff getting uh, kind of stuck in the hose sitting on the ground. Um, a lot of times uh, the septic holes aren't flush to the ground, and once you put this thing on, um, this actually sits up a little bit. 
Uh, so without these, you get stuff stuck in here and you have to kind of lift the hose up and let it drain out. Uh, that help, This helps tremendously with that. Uh, the other thing we bought, uh, since this camper has a black tank flush, uh, we bought a separate hose uh, just for that. Uh, you, do def you definitely do not want to use your drinking water hoses um, when you're flushing out your septic. Uh, we bought an orange one just so it would be really obvious. We don't even store this uh, with the other hoses. This has its own storage. Um, and in addition, we bought another water regulator. This one doesn't have the uh, fancy valve on it um, just to uh, make sure we're protecting uh, the black tank flush lines as well. That's everything that we have for our septic system on this camper. Here's the storage for your sewer hose. Uh, this is accessible from either side of the camper. I usually put this end in first. And I just kind of retract it as I push it in. And once you get it in all the way, uh, there's still just enough room to be able to get this end cap on. And then the door just swings shut and locks. And again, you can access this from either side of the camper. We're about halfway through the items that I wanted to share with you today. If you're finding this video helpful, please give it a like. Also consider subscribing. That really helps motivate us to make more videos. We try to respond to all questions and comments on our videos, so if you do have any questions about any of the items I showed you today or our camper, please leave us a comment and we'll get back to you. Also, stay tuned until the end of the video for an extra tip on how to keep your electrical gear dry. Next we'll talk about leveling the trailer. It's really important to keep your trailer level so that it functions correctly. We did buy adhesive levels that we can stick on our camper, but we typically just pull out uh, this old-fashioned level to just make sure that it is accurate. When you're leveling your trailer from side to side, uh, you'll need something to be able to drive up onto to make it level. Uh, we use these blocks, uh, which basically are kind of like Legos, and they just kind of snap together so you can kind of build a ramp to drive the tire up onto. Typically, you'll end up with something like this that you drive the tire up onto. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is you want to make this wide enough that you can fit your tire on there and your wheel chocks, which I'll talk about next. So we bought these uh, for our wheel chocks. And this is important to have these on both tires so that the trailer can't move at all um, while you're using it. Um, I tend to put the rope behind the tire. So I'll chalk one side and kind of slide this around the back side of the tire and chalk the other side just so you don't have to worry about anyone catching this rope as they walk by. To then level your trailer uh, front to back, you just use the tongue and raise it high enough or lower it until it's level in that direction. Um, and then you would drop down your stabilizers in each corner of the camper. I keep wooden blocks in the camper to put the stabilizers on anytime we're not on concrete. Uh, this just keeps the uh, stabilizers dry and it's a, a more secure base than just putting it on the ground. In terms of actually lowering the stabilizers, we just use the tool that came with the camper. It's an entirely manual process, so we don't have any fancy tools yet. Um, a lot of people have drills that they put on, um, but we typically just have the kids take turns doing this, um, and it works fine. Next we'll talk about security for the camper. Uh, both doors on the camper have deadbolts, and all the compartments lock up, uh, some of them with different keys. So as you can see, I got tons of keys for this camper. Some of the additional stuff we did include a wheel locks and a hitch lock. So this is what we bought for a wheel lock. And basically you just wrap it around the tire, uh, push it shut, and then once it's in place, push this down to lock it. Um, this covers it to keep it dry. And then to take it out, you turn the key and this pops back out and you can release it. Usually I close it enough that uh, there's still one hole open right here, so when it rains, and I open this up, a lot of times water dumps out, so just be uh, watching for that. For hitch locks, there's a lot of options out there, and I did a lot of research before settling on this one. Um, but this one from Proven Locks, I think, uh, does a really good job. Um, it actually lets you secure both the safety chains uh, and the hitch, um, and I'll show you how uh, this gets installed right now. So the first thing you need to do is hook up the safety chains, and basically you hook them onto here like this, and you put one on each side. And then you take this and you put this into the hitch like this. Drop this down, so that's in there. And then you find uh, these slots slide into this. So you just gotta line it up like that. And then the last thing you do is put this on the end. 
and slide it up in there. So that locks that and it's on there really secure. Uh, to take it off, you take the key and pop that back down, pull this out and reverse uh, the way you put it on. Moving on to tools for the camper. We actually bought a lot of tools for the camper, but one of the best things we bought were these totes. So we have a tote for our tools, one for our electrical cords and one for our water hoses. The reason I like these totes so much for this camper is they fit perfectly in the front storage. So you can slide them in like this. And if you picked up the left side, you can rotate it and actually get them sideways. Uh, we keep three totes in here, but I'm pretty confident we could fit four if we really needed to. Before each trip, I check the torque on the lug nuts using a torque wrench and a socket set. I really like this torque wrench because I can lock in the pounds without it slipping while I'm using it. And I'll show you in a second how that works. In addition, I bought a breaker bar. Uh, mainly, if you ever have a flat tire, I would use this to loosen the lug nuts. You don't ever want to use a torque wrench uh, to loosen the lug nuts. I also bought, bought a heavy duty jack uh, that can handle the weight of the trailer. Uh, it doesn't actually come with one. I think you're supposed to use your car's jack, but I didn't really feel confident that I'd be able to lift it up. I also bought a package of gloves. I have uh, pairs that I use when I'm hitching up and a different pair I use like when I'm doing the septic stuff. So for my socket set, I use the 19 millimeter. Um, it just snaps right on the end. And then for adjusting the uh, weight, you just pull the bottom thing out and turn it to the left until you get to uh, what you want to torque it at. I've been doing 85. I couldn't find anything definitive in the manual. It just said between 85 and 95, unless otherwise noted. So I've been doing 85. If anyone knows for sure what I should be doing for this camper, please let me know in the comments. So once you're done, you're then supposed to unlock it and turn it back down to the minimum, which is 50, and then relock it for storage. A lot of the other tools I have, I just picked up at Menards. Uh, for example, a crescent wrench, uh, pliers, a vice grip, hammer, uh, and just for fun, a hatchet. One tool that I almost forgot about is a screwdriver. And I really like this screwdriver because it has different ends, um, including a square end. Uh, so there are some screws in here that are square heads, so this really helps. It has uh, multiple sizes for each of these. So there's two different Phillips sizes, two different uh, flat head sizes, and two different square head sizes. So the last thing I was going to cover today is maintenance for the camper. Uh, since our camper is new, we haven't had to do a lot of maintenance on it, mostly preventative stuff. One of the things we do do is on the rubber around the slide out, we spray a water resistant silicone lubricant. And on the slide out rails, we slide um, a slide out lube and protectant. Um, typically, I don't bring these with us when we camp. I just did today for the video. I usually keep them in our garage. When we load up the camper to go camping, we generally open the slide out and that's the time I'll do it, usually every other week. Another item that you should have is extra fuses. Um, I had a hard time finding the exact fuse set that we needed for our camper, so I ended up with a lot more than I actually needed. Uh, but just make sure you have some 15s, uh, 30s, and 40 amps. Other stuff I've bought but not had to use yet is lap sealant. So this is self-leveling, uh, and this is what you would use on the roof. So if there's any cracks, um, or if the uh, seal around anything on the roof is getting loose, uh, you'd put more of this on it to seal it up. The other one is just 100% silicone. This is what you'd use on the side of the camper. So if there's any cracks on the seams, um, around the storage compartments, or around the windows, this is what you'd use to seal that up. Um, it is different from the roof. They did say for the roof to use self-leveling lap sealant and for the sides to use 100% silicone. The only other preventive maintenance we do is with our insect screens. So we bought these to cover up uh, the air intake and exhaust. Uh, this is for the heater. And then on the other side of the camper, we have one over the water heater one uh, for the same reason to prevent bugs from getting in here. These just cover the hole and they're held on by a spring that keeps them in place. That covers everything that we purchased for the travel trailer in terms of accessory and tools that we need to be able to run it. Uh, it's now time for the bonus tip. Uh, when we use our electrical hookup and we need to use our uh, 
extender, either the heavy duty electrical cord or the 30 amp. Uh, typically you end up with this stuff laying on the ground. Um, and I didn't really like the idea of this getting wet either from the dampness or if it rained. Uh, so to keep this dry and off the ground, um, we just use the uh, electrical tote that we talked about earlier. And all I did for this was at the top, I just cut notches for the cords on each end. So then you simply just set the cord in here so that the notches line up with the holes and then put the lid on top. Uh, this sits outside. If it rains, you might get some water on top, uh, but we've never had actually rain get inside and none of this stuff get wet. Uh, so that makes me feel a lot more comfortable about it being outside. Um, another thing is this isn't the heaviest, so we actually take a brick with us and set this inside. Um, once this is in there, it really uh, isn't going to flip over. Um, in addition, um, once you have the lid on top, uh, you can slide this under your slide out or even under the camper to give it even more protection. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.